So the background to Monarch 3, uh, and in general, the uh, first-line CDK4-6 inhibitor trials is that aromatase inhibitors uh, have been the standard of care for many years. Um, we started to see the emergence of uh, uh, the data with palbociclib, certainly with rivalciclib, and these trials were all uh, designed uh, in that 2013, 2014, 2015 uh, time period. And they were designed to test whether uh, the addition of a CDK4-6 inhibitor, that is, in this case, uh, a bemaciclib, would, uh, when added to an aromatase inhibitor, would improve progression-free survival. So Monarch-3 uh, uh, focused on women with ER-positive, HER2-negative metastatic breast cancer, uh, first-line setting, um, and these are women, uh, again, where an aromatase inhibitor would be the standard of care. Uh, they were randomized in a two-to-one fashion to receive an aromatase inhibitor plus placebo or an aromatase inhibitor plus a bemaciclib. The trial, um, uh, primary results from the trial have been reported out. Uh, final results uh, additionally demonstrating that the addition of a bemaciclib to an aromatase inhibitor improved progression-free survival. This led to global regulatory approval. And so here at ESMO, uh, we reported out the second plan interim analysis as it relates, relates to overall survival. So what we found was that the addition of a bemaciclib to an aromatase inhibitor in the intent to treat population uh, improved overall survival by a little more than 12 months. Important, however, was that the, uh, the, uh, the, the trial was set up to, uh, to determine whether or not to stop the trial was a, uh, what we call the crossing boundary, and that was not uh, crossed with a p-value of point, uh, a little less than 0 0.04. Um, similarly, uh, we, there was also a population of patients uh, preplanned with visceral disease. Now, this is a group of patients that we know has a uh, tends to have a worse prognosis, and there were uh, some fairly substantial data uh, early on demonstrating that abemaciclib had uh, a substantial benefit in patients with high risk or concerning characteristics such as uh, liver metastases, high-grade tumors, progesterone receptor negative. And so this was a, a, a very important group, again, pre-planned to look at uh, the benefit of bemaciclib. And what we saw was that uh, the addition of a bemaciclib to an aromatase inhibitor in this group improved survival by uh, a little over 16 months. But again, did not meet the, uh, the criteria or the crossing boundary, and so we continue to follow patients for that final overall survival result, which we expect in 2023. There's a couple things I think that are quite uh, important and reassuring to clinicians. First of all, um, as we look at the three CDK4-6 inhibitors, uh, it's very important to note that it's difficult to do cross-trial comparisons. Why? Uh, because sometimes the populations might be slightly different, um, uh, but in general, as we've looked across these uh, CDK4-6 inhibitors, we can see that the control arm uh, for survival is doing about the same. For the ribociclib, uh, of course, we've seen that there's been consistent improvement in overall survival. And now a bemaciclib, what we're seeing is a, a, a fairly large improvement in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the delta, and that is the, the number of months, in this case more than 12 months, and in the visceral disease more than 16 months. So uh, uh, although that didn't quite meet statistical significance, uh, we anticipate that, or we could say that the data are maturing very quite favorably. Uh, we'll obviously wait for the overall survival results. But I think for clinicians, this is quite reassuring. Uh, it's reassuring because we've had these questions as we've looked across the CDK4-6 inhibitors uh, and we're seeing no overall survival benefit with palbociclib. Again, lots of questions why that is, we're not quite sure, uh, but clearly with the drug abemaciclib, we're seeing a, a, a relatively large delta improve, in terms of uh, improvement in overall survival.